The New Life Sciences Building at the University of Southampton is a key part of our commitment to investing in innovation and excellence. It will be the new home for the schools of biological sciences and medicine and the focus for the new Institute for Life Sciences, the IFLS. Our engineers and scientists are already working together to find solutions to today's complex problems. The IFLS will enable dynamic and pioneering collaborative ventures in new areas of research. The building's at an important stage of its development, and to celebrate, we held a photography competition judged by the BBC's Chris Packham. One of the skills that I've learned to practice and continue to do so with interest is photography. So, pleasure to come and look at these photographs. The digital revolution has been profound, and the influence it's had on how we take photos, how we think about photographs, how we use the medium, is impossible to calculate. But no camera ever took a photograph. It doesn't matter how much equipment you've got, how good it is, um, uh, how much you've you know, spent on it. At the end of the day, it's, it's you, the photographer, that are making that choice. And that's the difference between a good and a bad photograph. The competition was won by zoology student Liz Curzon. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always taken photos, just like capturing pictures. and I'm always just constantly looking at things in a way of taking photos. Scientific research is undergoing a revolution as the traditional boundaries between biology, medicine, chemistry, physics and engineering become blurred, researchers are finding new and creative ways of working together. With our highly regarded reputation for original research, we are uniquely placed to be at the forefront of this revolution. We have outside a fantastic new building that will, I think, promote our research, will promote our education and develop an ethos of collaboration and innovation. In three years' time, when the building is complete and working and everybody's in there and operating, the people in that building will be the envy of everybody else on the campus. A time capsule was prepared for burial in the foundations of the new building. As well as items from today, it also has papers from a 30-year-old capsule found at the university's Boulderwood campus. Next, we've got the Daily Express for the 10th of September 1979. The Institute for Life Sciences will play a key part in setting the agenda for the next generation of researchers. What do we think the world will look like in 30 years' time? We have within our um, sciences, our, our, our technology, our motivation, uh, an opportunity to maintain what we see, we humans see, as a, as a healthy, healthy planet. Um, I suppose I also equally fear that we, that we may not get it right. I think global climate change and overpopulation, I think we're going to end up very soon really at risk of having resource wars over resources that at the moment we take for granted, but in 30 years' time we may not be able to, for example, water. You have to be optimistic, optimistic, because if you weren't, it'd be a pretty bleak outlook. <laughs> I mean, you can, like, reverse certain things and you can hopefully, I mean, the world's starting to think about climate change more than they used to. Well, I can think that um, my hometown, Portsmouth, that would be definitely underwater by then, because, you know, um, I don't think technology would change that much, to be honest. There are many threats. Climate change, the uh, global financial crisis, changes in the demographics in the UK and in the world. But it seems to me that universities will be an important part of the solution. We will be healthier, um, but we won't cure all ills. We, we are human beings, and, and um, after a number of decades, the body does start to go wrong. If you think back 30 years, the way that technology has transformed just day-to-day -day life, then how is that going to be different in the future? There's going to be many, many differences, I suspect. I'm a neuroscientist, and I actually work with a fruit fly, Drosophila, with the aims of understanding the mechanisms of Alzheimer's disease in the hope that maybe one day we can cure it. The IFLS will also encourage new and innovative ways of learning. The technology will take over things like you probably you wouldn't have a normal library anymore. Probably I wouldn't have thought sort of everything would be on computers and everything like that. It'll be an environment that's much more enabled by technology, and there will be a blurring between the virtual world and the real world. But the real world will be important in bringing people together to understand and develop new ideas. The Life Sciences Building opens in the autumn of 2010. The University of Southampton has had a great past and I think actually 
the difficulties which have never been greater in the world and possibly for the university will be overcome by places like this. Want to know more? Then go to www.southampton.ac.uk slash estate development.